Hey there everyone, I'm Michael, and welcome to another video. I'm going to be trying a new format in this video, so let me know how it turns out. In this video, I want to show you guys around the l latest Milestone 1 build of So Highly Distant. This is the final build in Milestone 1. It brings a lot of new features uh, that have been requested over the last few builds. It fixes a few bugs, makes the game a little more stable, and is the first build that actually supports both macOS and Linux alongside Windows and can be downloadable through itch.io. Um, in front of me right now, I've got the itch.io download page. Um, as you can see, it is available for Linux, Mac, and Windows, all 64-bit. Uh, it all works. I've had it tested out on Mac. Uh, I believe Linux also works as well. Windows definitely works. So I will be doing this video in the itch.io build that's currently available at the time of recording. So let's get into this. The first things that I'm going to mention in this build involve the main menu. I've redone the main menu a lot in this build, as well as the uh, feature update that led up to the creation of this build. Uh, I've redone the menu buttons themselves, I've gave them icons and descriptions to make them a little more... a little more like a games user interface, and less like a dumpster fire or a shift OS build. So I think it looks pretty nice, but do let me know what you guys think. I've also added community announcements to this build, in the sense that, rather than it being placeholder text, this actually gets pulled in from the forums. So this post that you're seeing in front of you right now, even though it says it's a test post, is actually readable on the game's forums, and you can go visit the post and uh, reply to it and do whatever you want with it, even though I wouldn't keep it up for that much longer. The logo of the game as well has been added in this build and the previous build, which of course has been done by Rahilu. It has a transparent background now, which in previous builds it did not. I can't show it in this window mode, but the socially distant icon, uh, the hexagon icon, is now used as both the taskbar icon and the window icon in place of Monogame's default uh, red logo. Uh, this is the same for Mac OS and Linux. Uh, the game will actually set the icon properly. So yeah, that's basically the main menu. Not really a lot to show off. The final difference with the main menu is that rather than having just a new game button and a continue button, you now have a continue button. The continue button loads the last save file you've played. There's the switch account button which lets you select a different save file. And there's the new account button which lets you create a new game. You can also change the skin from the new main menu, and you can access system settings and shut the game down. That's about it for the main menu, let's move on to the next thing. The next features take place in the settings menu, which are basically new settings for the game, which I will get into what they actually do later on in the video. Uh, but you can now enable and disable background blurs as well as transparency effects in the gateway operating system, which will be used later on in future builds, but is still used in this build with the terminal's background. You can also swap the mouse button so that the left button acts as the right button, and the right button acts as the left button, vice versa. And you can change the skin from the settings user interface as well. You can also access in-game credits, as well as the source code and the game data directory in the settings menu. The developer console has been redone as well in this build. It still functions the same as it used to, in that you can use it to run various commands that control the game and its engine, but it also acts as a debug log so that you can see what's going on internally under the hood. In release builds, it won't show as much information, and as you can see, this is a release build because we're running it from it, but in debug builds, it's a very, very handy tool almost synonymous with your IDE's debug log or output log or whatever your IDE calls it. This is basically going to act like that, but with some extra features for controlling the game's state. Next, we're going to move on to Gateway OS, which is the in-game operating system for the game. I'm going to need to start zooming in for this because I need to actually interact with the game to show you guys most of these things, and I'm having trouble reading it. But, uh, first and foremost is some new skinning features I've been added in this build. You can now set the background image of the system bar. In this case, I'm using a Windows XP skin to demo that, because you can now see that I'm using the Windows XP silver taskbar background as my system bar. And I'm using the XP Bliss wallpaper, which is probably breaking some copyright, but I don't think Microsoft cares nowadays. And besides, this is just to demo the fact that the feature works, so I'm probably not breaking any laws doing this. 
Uh, I can switch him back to the main default skin if you lawyers really want me to. Anyway, this is the part where I start to zoom in, so let's get into this. The terminal has received some updates as well, and these updates also affect the um, developer console with the exception of one feature, tab completion, which I will show off right now. Tab completion is simple. You type in the start of a command, you hit tab, it fills it in. If there are multiple commands that it could fill in, it's going to give you a list of them. For example, H has help and um, something else that I'm having trouble. Oh yeah, the home directory. It also lists files that are in your current directory and directories that are in your current directory. So the home folder is in the current directory, so it's going to list that as well. Tab completions also work for command line arguments. For example, this just took me into the home directory. A side effect of this is that if you do dot slash and then hit tab, you can see all of the files and directories in your current working directory. Which is a shorter version of doing ls and hitting enter. You can also use tab completion to run graphical programs. With that said, the editor has been redone so that it now has word wrapping and many of the bugs with word wrapping have been fixed. A known issue right now is hard to explain, but I can demo it if I zoom in and I start cursing around. If I press down, if I get to this paragraph here, um, it is word wrapped, but if I press the down arrow, you'll see that it comes right below the second line of the paragraph. That's an issue with how my code works, and I'm not going to go ahead and explain it because it's annoying and it's even hard for me to comprehend, but I have some idea how I'm going to fix it, I just haven't gotten around to it yet, and I won't until Milestone 2 because it's an insignificant bug that does not affect the gameplay whatsoever or the stability of the game itself. But other than that, word wrapping does work. The editor itself has received some user interface updates as well. The new open and save buttons have been replaced with icons, and the general color scheme has been changed. Browse has also been slightly changed. Uh, the buttons no longer have background colors, and the color scheme has been changed as well. Other than that, there's nothing really new in the browser. As far as Gateway OS user interface features go, the terminal now has a background blur, which is what those settings before we're referring to the background blur and the transparency effects, you can turn this off in settings if you don't like it or it chugs your system. There is also a task switch here at the top of the screen, which I don't know if I've showed off in a previous build, but nonetheless it is notable as being a feature in Milestone 1. This allows you to switch between your open applications, which you can now have multiple of open applications in this build. There's also a close button in every graphical program. Other than that, there aren't many changes in this build as far as new um, graphical features go. The terminal, however, does have command line history, and this is something that also works in the developer console. Fortune has been added to the game because we can't have Kausei without Fortune, and Fortune prints out some random messages. That's a Vsauce reference right there. The oven too. A in his eye. That it, for you, was with on. As have, but be they. I didn't even read that. Scrolling in this build has been fixed since the previous build. Beforehand it was a little wonky, but now it works perfectly fine. A new developer console command has been added in this build and works in release builds as well. If you do GUI.FPS true, you will get a frame rate counter. The frame rate counter is different in this build than it was in previous builds when that command didn't exist, and it's a little easier on the eyes and doesn't really get in the way of the game anymore. Nonetheless, this also proves that the developer console supports the command line history as I've just disabled GUI.FPS with less keystrokes than it took to enable it. Another command that exists is GUI.LoadSkin, which you can use to load in an installed skin, as if you were in the skin's user interface. However, 
Unlike using the settings user interface for loading a skin, this is not permanent. When you restart the game, the previous skin you were loading before running the command will be reloaded. And that's basically it for new features in this build. I really hope you guys enjoy what you're seeing so far, and I'm really excited that this game is finally on itch.io. It was a lot of work to set up. I will be doing a video showing how I set up the build scripts and everything that I use to get it all working, as well as Mac OS and Linux support. It's gonna be a long tutorial, I guess. Um, it's involved, it's annoying, but it is worth it if you're developing a monogame.net core application and you want to automate the build process and publish to things like Steam and stuff, but other than that, the last announcement that I'm going to make is that insiders are no longer going to be a thing anymore. I'm, I've decided to just release new builds to itch.io since we are getting into Milestone 2, which is the core gameplay, so I can get some more feedback on how that all works. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed what you saw, go ahead and leave a like and a comment if you really want to, or dislike the video, it's, it's up to you, I'm not gonna force you. Uh, anyway, I've been Michael, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.